Well, hey there, everyone. So I'm going to show you how to do my twisty vine stitch. This is a stitch video, not a project video. So I'm not going to uh, show you a whole project. Um, and um, I'm just making a, a small piece to show you how to do the stitch, which I probably uh, will frog later and um, when I decide what project I'm going to do. Um, but I will uh, help you in case you decide you want to do this before I have a project going or if you have a use for it and something you're doing and don't just want a short stitch video. Okay, so I just cast on with my crochet chain cast on. That's my favorite and um, not mine. I'm, uh, um, it's a crochet cast on and um, so it, it has been done with crochet hooks on the loom and I like this um, version uh, just using the fingers. And uh, then I did a row of owl eye, and then I went right into the stitch pattern. I tried uh, different edges. I tried a different edge here. I didn't like it, but then I decided I like this edge here, so I'll be showing you that one. And the same thing, I tried a different edge here, which was longer edges, and I didn't like that. So this, um, there, I gotta get this back up. This is the edge that I'm doing. So I'll show you that one and how I set up the loom for it. So I set up the loom to use two end pegs because I wanted to take care of the, the it only has the slightest tendency to curl so it may not even need anything <laughs> at all. You could do a swatch and see. I don't think I really need anything with it but I did anyway. So I've, I've done the end pe pegs in a pattern that works uh, well with this stitch. I like the way it looks because uh, if we look on this side, you have the different things I did, but here on the top you have the pattern that I, I picked to go with the stitch um, with the edge. And I really like how all this worked together up here at the top. As some of these are fatter pieces because this um, is a uh, yarn that has a lot of wool in it and it is roving and it goes thicker and thinner so they're the odd thick piece but um, I like the way it went with it so that's why I'm using this particular edge and everything is nice and flat nothing's curling it, with any method that I used and it's only one row of owl eye and I usually use two rows of owl eye I'm just going to adjust this camera a little bit I usually use two rows of owl eye because um, that keeps things from curling. So uh, my test was one row to see what would happen and it's nice and flat. This is on the edge so the stitch isn't gonna curl up much either. Now the yarn. So first of all, this is a 5 8 inch loom. It's a Cindy Wood loom, 42 peg, nine inch loom. It's actually my um, hat loom. It's a youth uh, adult loom, but I have a very small head. So this is what I use for a hat that I want to fit tight. Not a, not a slouch hat, but a hat that just fits me. Okay. So this is the yarn I'm using. King Cole Riot Yarn Chunky. This is one of my favorite yarns. It's uh, like Scarfy in a lot of ways. A Lion Brown Scarfy, but it's stronger. It doesn't break as easy as Scarfy. So it's nice that way and it knits up um, really nice and it comes in a, in a lot of different colors. So it's a number five yarn and it is 30% wool, 70% acrylic and you get 145 yards um, and 100 grams and it's made in the UK. So King Cole Riot Chunky. I know they have a Riot DK. I've never used it, but it's it's really, really pretty too. They really do um, nice color runs. So anyway, that's, oh, did I tell you the color? I don't know if I found the color. The color is ocean, ocean. So all kinds of ocean colors in here. Okay. Now, oh, the other thing about this is I'm showing it to you with a chunky yarn that's about the same with the Scarfy. It's a thinner chunky yarn. So if I was using a really thick chunky yarn like Charisma, this would be a very tight kind of stitch. And it actually looks good like that, really tight too. So it'd be a tighter stitch. And if you used a thin yarn, you would have a more lacy stitch and it looks good that way too. So 
it can be used and it can be used looser or tighter as well I kind of went in the middle to do this stitch video so it's kind of a medium look of, of what it is going to look like and uh, here's what the back looks like the back has a kind of cool look too <laughs> like a bunch of O's <laughs> so anyway let's show you how to do the stitch so I've already worked to here and I know for this peg, I'll show you the pegs when I get to the end here. I just know I have to go over it once more for what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna do that, okay? Then we mark every second peg. And as you see here, I'm uh, after my end pegs, and if you only had one end peg, then you would just have the one end peg before you got there. But I put a colored marker here and I put a colored marker here and then every two just like that. And so I'm on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm on 11 pegs. So you want to be on odd pegs to do this so that you can have your extra um, color in your two, two peg pairs over here. And you can go a lot wider. I just went enough to actually show the pattern in this since I'm not keeping this. So we always treat the peg with the marker stitch the same and we always treat the peg that doesn't have the marker stitch the same. So it doesn't matter which direction we're going, we're always going to treat the pegs with the marker stitch the same. Except it will be a little different here where we go to the, the edge, but I'll show you that when we get there. So whenever we get to our marked peg, we're going to just go over it and do a U-wrap and then we're going to take the loop, move it over to the second peg. So if you think of this as one and two, one and two, one and two. Okay. Um, yeah, hold on for a minute. My phone is falling all over the place here. <laughs> Just stick it here. <laughs> He's falling on me. <laughs> it's very distracting. <laughs> okay, so I move the loop over here. Now, once the loop is over, we're going to do something with the empty peg. We're going to go behind it, and it's like we're doing an E-wrap this way. We go behind it and in front, behind it and in front, and then we're going to do a purl over stitch. So. I had a lot of fun developing this purl over stitch to use with a yarn over to get some different stitches. I've never ever seen it used that way before and I've been searching for months. And it was a lot of fun developing this because most of the time when you do a yarn over, you get a fairly big kind of an eyelet or a hole and you have to do something different so that you don't. And this tightens up the wrap that we're putting there. Anyway, the purl over is a stitch that Teresa Higby named. She developed it and used it in patterns and she gave me permission to use her stitch in my patterns and video them. So it's pretty cool. I've had a lot of fun with this stitch. It's called a purl over, but it's nothing like a purl. It's done the knit way and I can see why she didn't name it knit over because that's already something. So. Your yarn is always, so we've done the e-wrap. When you do it, your yarn's always on top, whereas a purl is down there. So by wrapping this the way we wrapped it, we've already got that set up. We go in the bottom yarn like that from the bottom up, go over the top loop and scoop it up. And then you just flip it over the peg and tighten. And that's going to make that e-wrap stitch we did, as you can see it here, be a nice tight stitch instead of a loose one. And it's going to make the yarn over we did just a, a very small eyelet. And then after we've done that on peg one, we go over to peg two and we're just gonna e-wrap the two yarns together. And that's it. That's what we do to our two peg pairs. So again, we've got 
the yellow marker and we've got a unmarked one here and then we're just going to knit with the u-wrap over the yellow peg and then pick it up and move the stitch over here and I always tighten it a little bit and then we're going to come back to this stitch because we don't want that too loose we're going to come back to the stitch and we're going to wrap it like an e-wrap so we go behind it and in front wrap it again and we purl it over it's a purl over not a purl we come in the bottom we scoop up the top and bring it over the top and I'm just flipping it like this but I've done it a lot so I flip it with this and pull as I go to just get exactly the right tension because I've done it a lot and then you go over here and you just e-wrap the two strands together and we've done another pair here's another pair here just knit over it move the stitch over tighten it a little bit come back do an e-wrap and it's like you're doing an e-wrap cast on wrapping it like that go in from the bottom over the top loop and just flip the loop over so you're not knitting it off you're just flipping it over and tightening and you're tightening it you're kind of pulling a little bit to the to the right because that's the direction we're going and then we come over here and e-wrap the two loops together okay so knit over take the loop put it on the other peg and so as you see we're on the second peg of our end stitch come back do the e-wrap and then just flip it over and then I e-wrap this peg so the direction I'm going I treat this peg like it's the second peg to my pair and then I just go over the end peg, knit it off, come back, go over it again, knit it off. And this time I knit this one off in a U-wrap, come back and knit this one off in a U-wrap again. And that's how I'm doing this edge that I'm now doing with, with the stitch that blends in so nicely with it. Okay, now we are on peg one, two this way, one, two this way, one, two this way. So what do we do on peg one? We go over it, knit it off, take it and move it over to the peg, give it a little bit of a tightening, come back and e-wrap it like this. We always go behind it and in front. That's the direction we do this stitch, go under it, over the working yarn and flip it over and then we e-wrap this one and we're on to our next pair and I got a little bit of a mess here to untangle <laughs> there we go there we go okay now actually once you get this down it goes really fast there's a little gear your bottom right hand corner if you click on that gear it will slow down the video and you can pick how slow you want it to go so that you can really watch how I do these stitches but I'm going to bring it closer while I do a couple to make sure that you can see really well we do a u-wrap over peg one like that we take the stitch move it over to peg two tighten it up a bit come back and do this double e-wrap over peg one go in from the bottom up through the top to do a purl over whoops and um, because I'm using roving yarn it, it can be a little bit easy to split your yarn but I'm able to do it just fine and tighten it and there we go and then we do the e-wrap over the two yarns and see that's what we're doing here that's what's creating this right here and this pattern that's coming down here 
Okay. So do the U wrap stitch, take the yarn loop, put it over the next peg, tighten it, come back, do this E wrap type of wrap around it, go in from the bottom up through the top and scoop up the yarn and just flip it over and then snug it up. And then come over here and e-wrap off the two nets, e-wrap them together. Okay, now we're on to this peg again. You wrap it, one with a yellow marker, take the loop, put it on peg two, snug it up, come back, wrap it in an e-wrap like this, go from the bottom, scoop up the yarn on top and just flip it over and tighten. Then e-wrap the two together, knit it off, go to the end peg, knit it over, and then I come back like this, and knit it off, knit this one, and give it another knit over. Come from behind, give it one more knit over, and then I'm ready to start again. There's my peg one, there's my peg two. So knitting it out over, taking the loop, moving it onto the next peg, snugging it up, going back, e-wrapping over, double e-wrap, under, scoop up the yarn and flip it over, doing the yarn over and giving it a bit of a, just tightening it up a bit, going in, doing the e-wrap over the two yarns. So e-wrapping them together, on to the next stitch, and knit over it in the u-wrap, move it on to stitch peg two, come back, do the e-wrap, do the purl over on the stitch, tighten it, and then e-wrap these two together, and then keep going. That's all there is to it. Now I've done a little bit more. So, and see how it looks. We can look at the edge, because now you can see I've done the edge further along. So it gives you a nice edge. And I did the same edge on this side. Huh, if I can get a good angle on this side. <laughs> but it, <laughs> there, <laughs> it's the same edge. So there you go. See, it looks funny unless I get it exactly the right angle. There we go, that shows them. <laughs> so there you go, there's how to do it. And um, it works. In the round, it looks quite different because um, this effect going back and forth like this is from going in the flat panel. So when you do it in the round, you'll get this kind of a look here, but this will be a lot straighter when as it comes down. So I actually like the look better in the flat panel because you won't get this kind of, you don't get quite this circular thing, but you, it still can be done and it still gives you an interesting stitch, just not the same stitch. And the other thing I want to say about it is you have a lot of texture, which is hard to, for me to show you, but these stitches here tend to float above and these stitches tend to go behind. So it gives it almost a ribbed kind of look. You can see it like that. You can see how it, it rises up. And if you look at it, um, head on, you see all these looking like it blends in more. And here you get that kind of look. And upside down, <laughs> there you go, upside down, you get this kind of a look. So it looks pretty nice every way that you look at it. I'm really liking this stitch and I just don't know what project I'm going to make. I almost think it needs a shawl, but it would make a really nice infinity scarf too. 
and there's the back. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the stitch video. I gave you enough that you can go ahead and use it and make something because it might be a while till I get, a <laughs> get around to making something with it. I have a lot of projects on the go. So I want to make sure I gave you enough that you'd be able to take this stitch and work with it and make something. Okay, so until next time, we'll see you.